three and then go ahead. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa sayyid al-mursaleen Muhammadin wa ala ahli bayti al-tahirin wa sahabati al-mantajabin. In the name of God, the, uh, in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, may all these things be upon Prophet Muhammad and upon his purified progeny and the believers of his companions. And may the peace and the blessings be upon all of you, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I pray to God that uh, your ninth day of Ramadan is going well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds and answer your prayers. Uh, this evening we continue with the Quran study. We reach, we reach verse 37, so I read the uh, Arabic. Muhammad Rada will read the English and then we'll I'll try to study the verse, inshallah. <clears throat> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والبدن جعلناها لكم من شعائر الله من شعائر الله لكم فيها خير فذكر الله عليها صواف فإذا وجبت جنوبها فكلوا منها وأطعموا الطانع والمعتر كذلك سخرناها لكم لعلكم تشكرون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم and we have appointed the sacrificial camels for you as one of the sacred practices of God in which there is much good for you. Therefore, pronounce the name of God over them when they are lined up for sacrifice. Once they have fallen after slaughter, then eat of their meat and feed the contented and the beggar. Thus, we have made them subject to you that you may be grateful. So Quran uh, continues with addressing the rituals of pilgrimage. And this particular verse, this verse particularly talks about uh, the, the sacrifice offered and especially about the camels. Uh, the camels that are designated as, uh, you know, uh, cattle for the sacrifice during Hajj. Uh, those are, God has said, uh, we made those camels, uh, al-budn, al-budn is a puller of uh, al-badana, which is uh, a singular of one fat camel that they are designated for sacrifice. Uh, God says, those also, we, uh, we count them for you, among the sha'ar. We've talked about what is the meaning of the sha'ar and how it is translated into English. Some said uh, uh, sha'ar means symbols. Some said offerings. Some said uh, ceremonies. In my humble, humble opinion, I believe the closer meaning would be the sacred practices that God has commanded Muslims to do. So God has counted uh, sacrificial animals, uh, including uh, camels, as part of the sha'ar, the sacred uh, uh, practices. And then he says, لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعَ There are benefits for you. Uh, you know, in the camels, for the sacrifice, and in all the sacred the practices there are benefits for those who practice them i already talked about this yesterday how uh, those rituals and the practices whether it is fasting praying giving charity going to pilgrimage and all these practices are beneficial for humans in this world let alone in the hereafter no, the Quran emphasizes uh, on the concept of having benefits for those who practice them in this world and in the hereafter. 
So I don't want to repeat what I said uh, yesterday, how these practices have benefits for uh, those who practice them. There are benefits for them. فَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهَا صَوَافِ When uh, you, line, you line them up for slaughter, you bring them for, for sacrifice and you line them up for slaughter, mention the name of God. So this is, uh, you know, from this, uh, many scholars actually uh, believe that for us Muslims to eat from uh, uh, the meat of a cattle, the name of God has to be mentioned while they are being slaughtered. This is one of the verses that we, we drive such understanding. Not after, while they are being uh, slaughtered, they have to, uh, those who slaughter them, they have to mention the name of the name of God, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, for example. And then when this slaughter is done, the Quran says, فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَطْعِمُوا الْقَانِعَ وَالْمُعْتَرِ You eat from the meat uh, of that uh, camel or that cattle, whatever you slaughtered, and share the rest with the contented, القانع, contented. The translation of القانع is, is uh, the contented. Who is the contented? Con contented is a, a person who's really poor, but does not come forward and ask for help or for, for money. He or she has a lot of dignity and integrity that would not permit him to come and ask for help and ask especially for food or money. Uh, uh, so the Quran here is, mentions this type of people first. Why? Because in the tradition of Islam, uh, there is an emphasis on maintaining dignity and integrity of the individuals within the community and the society. Islam cares about maintaining dignity and integrity within the society. And of course, the privacy as well. Uh, maybe the impression for some when they give money or food for the poor, they believe they are superior to them. They look down at them. And this is not accepted in, uh, in our faith. They are humans. They are equal to us. They are in a condition now that they are struggling with uh, their living. Uh, and in no way, when somebody shares his or her food or money or the sacrifice with the poor, make him or her better or, or superior to them. So it is very, it is very important within our faith to protect the privacy, honor the dignity and integrity of people who receive charity or the meat of the sacrifice. Deal with respect with them. So they come first. And in general, brothers and sisters, a community that enjoys dignity and integrity, every individual, individual there enjoys dignity and integrity. This community has less, uh, fewer rates of uh, crime and violations uh, of law and order because people, uh, their dignity and integrity prevent them from violating the law. Where communities that their dignity is always violated, they might be prone to uh, a higher level of a crime and violating the law. Anyway, so this comes, the Quran mentioned this type of people, al qani the contented. And later it says, then it says, Al-Mu'tar, the beggar, someone who comes to you and say, uh, I need money. 
I need food, I need support. Uh, you also share the food with them. You might say, well, some of them might not deserve that. Some, might, some of them might uh, do not need that. They might have money, uh, a, a lot of money or something. We assume, some people assume. The Quran says, if they ask, give. Give uh, as, as much as you can give. <clears throat> Because you never know. This is all assumption. Uh, yes, there might be and then somebody who does, really does not need support, uh, but you never know. Among them, there might be uh, many others who really need uh, uh, support and especially food. This way we have made these animals, the cattle, the cattle available for you to use. We give, we give, God gave humans power to use the, the animals in variety of ways. Uh, some animals for riding, some animals to carry uh, loads uh, on them, some animals to use their milk, uh, their hair for clothing, and also eat uh, from their meat. However, not all animals are subject to humans. Uh, some animals are not and should not be subject to humans. The birds fly freely in the, in the skies. Uh, the uh, beasts who roam the uh, wilderness, uh, whales in the oceans, they serve different purposes. They are not subject to human and should not be subject uh, to a human as well. All right, we move to the next verse, verse 37. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. لن ينال الله لن ينال الله لحومها ولا دماؤها ولكن يناله التقوى منكم كذلك سخرها لكم لتكبروا الله على ما هداكم وبشر المحسنين Neither their meat nor blood reaches God rather it is your piety that reaches him Thus he has subjected these animals to you so that you may glorify God for his guidance to you and give glad tidings to those who do good to others. So these sacrifices that you offer, <clears throat> those, these sacrifices uh, do not benefit God. They do not reach God. God is needless of these sacrifices. God is needless of all the actions of, of a humans. How, however, the Quran says, <clears throat> your, your piety, your devotion reaches God. God accepts your devotion and your piety. This is, <clears throat> uh, God wants us to really know, God wants, uh, the Quran wants to make, make it very clear for us that whatever we do is not for the benefit of God. No, it's for our benefit, for, for the benefit of those who practice, <clears throat> practice these sacred practices. And God says, uh, the, the meat and the blood of uh, those sacrifices does not, of course, do not reach God. What does reach him? Your piety. So remember, previous verses uh, have mentioned a uh, few facts that we make a, a conclusion, a wider conclusion. First of all, these sacrificing uh, acts, offering sacrificing uh, animal, sacrificing an animal, animal is part of the sha'ar the sacred practices. And the Quran said, said 
uh, whoever honors the Sha'ar, it reflects his devotion, his piety in the heart. Offering sacrifices is part of the Sha'ar. And there are many other Sha'ar, many, there are many other pra uh, sacred practices, such as fasting, giving charity. Whoever honors them, who honor, respect, and practice them with passion, it reflects his or her devotion and, and, and piety. And then this verse says that piety actually reaches God. So this is the beauty here. As you fast during Ramadan, this reflects the, the devotion in your heart. This devotion reaches God. When you give, when you share uh, food or money, or even when you volunteer, when you help, when you educate, whatever you do as a form of a charity, even a smile, remember, a smile is part of a charity. This reflects your devotion, and your devotion reaches God. That's the beautiful concept of, of our faith. God does not need our money when we give some people or some other traditions or faith they the quran has mentioned that some other followers of other faith and traditions they think god is in need in allah faqir god is in need and then when we give money it goes to god no that's not that's not the case god does not he has given us all of this, all of the blessings. And when we share uh, some, actually we are sharing some of his blessings that he has given us with others. So God does not need the blessings he, he, he given us. Our devotion reaches him and he rewards uh, the believers for, his, for their devotions. All right. Then he says, "Kadalika sakharnaha lakum." So the Quran is repeating this verse. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> God has made these cattle, uh, these animals, available for humans to use. In variety of ways, and and also to slaughter them for two purposes. One is for sacrificing, uh, which eventually will be used. Their meat will be used to be eaten uh, by those who uh, sacrifice them, and to share the rest with the poor. So the, the, the ultimate aim of, of uh, sacrificing a cattle is to share the food, to feed the hungry. And the other purpose is just for food, no sacrifice. So you slaughter a, 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 a lamb, for example, or a, a, a goat to eat the meat, use it at your home. For these two purposes, God has made it uh, permissible for humans to use their meat. In another word, uh, to survive, for humans to eat and survive. So because food is it's a, an essential process, is, is an essential act for us to survive. <clears throat> we'll come to discuss this later. God has made this, these animals available for us uh, to use in variety of ways. <clears throat> Not all animals, only the, the cattle. Uh, so when uh, slaughtering them, the Quran says, You glorify God. You say takbir, Allahu Akbar. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. <clears throat> because he has given you the permission uh, to slaughter them and use them to survive, use their meat to survive or
to sacrifice and again use their meat to feed yourself and, and, uh, and others. So there are a few things here that I would like to uh, discuss. <clears throat> some, some people might, uh, might, might ask these uh, questions. What about vegetarians? Vegetarians do not eat meat. Uh, what about them? So the Quran says in a previous verse, remember yesterday we discussed this verse, وَأُحِلَّتْ لَكُمُ الْأَنْعَامِ God has made eating the meat of uh, a cattle permissible for you. But if you don't want to eat it, that's up to you. It's not mandatory. It's permissible. It's permissible and, and the reason, again, is to survive as a food, to survive. But if you don't, you don't think you need to eat meat, uh, then it's, you can pass eating meat and you can pass slaughtering uh, an animal. Uh, so that the, the answer is is resolved here. Uh, not everyone. <clears throat> so some people might think everybody should be vegetarian. Well, uh, not really. A lot of people need some meat to supplement their food. It's an essential part for their for their growth, especially kids especially ladies who are pregnant, they might need uh, 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 meat. You know, I'm not a, a, a nutritionist, so I, uh, I'm not the right person to talk about who needs what. But I believe that if somebody uh, for food needs to eat meat, then God has made it permissible for them for that purpose to slaughter uh, a cattle. Uh, so that's for the vegetarian. However, if a vegetarian goes to Mecca, goes to Hajj, uh, should they slaughter a cattle or not? Well, so far, this is the command of God. This is what we understand. That this is the tradition of a prophet Ibrahim. He slaughtered uh, uh, a lamb there. And we need to follow this. We might not like it, but this is the command of God. We have to obey uh, what God has told us. Uh, that's, that's his command. Other than that, if somebody is vegetarian, yes, it's uh, okay for them not to eat and not to slaughter uh, any animal. The, the second question somebody might ask, uh, you know, nowadays about two to three million people go to pilgrimage. On the day of Eid, they slaughter at least a three million, two to three million cattle, you know, between camels, cows, sheep, or a goat. What happens with all these animal, uh, uh, cattle? It, isn't this a form of wasting resources? Uh, a lot of people ask. I remember when uh, we used to go to Hajj a, couple, a few times, people would ask this. Well, uh, the answer is, in fact, today, none of these animals are wasted. None. I personally, I'm, talk, I'm talking out of my personal experience uh, that none of these animals, two or three million uh, a goat or sheep or a camel, they are all, in fact, used thanks to modern technology. All these animals get to be freezed, uh, cleaned, and then shipped later to uh, nations who are, you know, facing poverty and hunger. Uh, th this is actually one of the blessings. So the sacrificing on the day of Eid turned to feed 
millions of others, not only in Mecca and in, in that area, but around the world in many nations. So this is in fact one of the benefits, the sacrifices of pilgrimage, of pilgrims are feeding millions of others somewhere, somewhere else. And finally, uh, I would like to mention a tradition that was used by the pagans uh, when they used to sacrifice, when they used to offer a sacrifice uh, to, to the idols, of course. When they sacrifice an animal, they would take the blood and pour it on the idols, their own idols, whether in, uh, in the Kaaba uh, or, or in the surrounding areas. Uh, Islam came and rejected this act, said no more, this is of course, that's uh, uh, not good, not healthy, and it's not devotional in, in any way. And there are no idols in Islam in, in uh, you know, uh, in any forms of or ways. Uh, that it created some kind of uh, uh, conflict. However, uh, this is what, uh, when the verse says, There, uh, their meat and their blood does not reach God. This is in fact referring to that myth that used to be used by pagans when they pour the blood on the, their idols, thinking this would please their Lord. In, uh, in Islam, this is totally rejected. All right. Say it before you move on. There's a question that is related to this verse, if you'd like to answer. Sure, absolutely. All right, so it's two parts. One says, um, what is the explanation why fish is not subjected to the same requirements as cattle? And then can you also elaborate on scaled versus non-scaled permission? All right, let, let me finish the verse first and then I'll come to these two questions. One is talking about uh, fish versus uh, cattle and then fish with a scale and, and no scale, right? Is this, all right. So the end of this verse, it says, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Giving glad tidings to those who do good to others. Muhsin, uh, the act of doing good to others. This is basically the spirit of Islam. Uh, the other verse in the Quran, it says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ The command of God is justice and doing good to others. بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ this verse. So uh, after justice comes Ahsan, uh, this verse says, give glad tidings to those who do good because the spirit of our faith and I guess all other faiths is to do good to others. Now, before we move to the next uh, verse quickly, so uh, animals, cattle need to be slaughtered. Uh, uh, to be, uh, uh, and, and then when they are slaughtered, the blood and the body comes out. So the blood, their blood is not for human consumption. This is one area that, and within uh, Muslim faith, the blood is not permissible for, uh, uh, for Muslims to, to eat, to consume. Fish, they might have uh, little of blood compared to, to animals. So there is no slaughter. They're, they're, uh, you know, the way you take them from water, uh, that's it. They, they get dead and then you can consume them. There is no, uh, you know, a slaughter way. Uh, in that. They're the bihad, uh, uh, you know, you just get them from, from the water. A, a, a Muslim catch them from the water. Uh, so this is the difference. Uh, uh, for cattle, the blood has to come out uh, when, when slaughter is happening. And this is in fact 
why we emphasize on slaughter, uh, suffocating an animal, uh, you know, that will not make it permissible for us to eat that animal, even if it is a cattle or, a, you know, a, a, a chicken, for example. Uh, we cannot use them. If they, if they get them suffocated or if they kill them, by, the, the blood has to come out by the method of a slaughter. Then what is permissible for uh, us to eat from the marine life, from seafood? So, and uh, uh, in some uh, Islamic madahib, whatever comes up from the sea, it's permissible for them to, uh, to eat. Uh, not in the Ja'fari fiqh. In Ja'fari fiqh, it's only uh, uh, fish with scales. The scales on, on their skin, there are scales. Fish with scales that are permissible to eat, and shrimps. That's it. Other uh, uh, marine life are not permissible uh, in the, the Ja'fari fiqh to be consumed. All right, we move to. The final verse for uh, tonight is a very short one. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Inna Allah yudafi'u an al-lazina amanu. Inna Allah la yuhibu kulla khawan kafur. Surely God will defend those who believe. Surely God loves not the traitor nor the ungrateful. This is the promise of God in the Quran. God stand with uh, the believers. God, defend the believers. This is the promise of God, especially those believers who are true in their faith, and they are practicing uh, 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 raising awareness, giving educate, uh, education, educating themselves and others about the faith, about the true faith, about the truth. When, uh, when in Islam, the pilgrimage became mandatory, uh, Muslims and the pagans, they used to do, uh, for a few years, they used to go do Hajj together, Muslims at the same time with, with pagans. But Muslims would do it a little bit different. You know, there are a few things that we already mentioned, different what the pagans used, used to do. And this has created some kind of confrontation, conflict between Muslims and, uh, and, and pagans used to bully Muslims. You know, why you are doing this differently? Uh, why you do this? This is not acceptable, bullying them. God says here, uh, don't worry. You continue with your uh, duty. Educate yourself and, uh, and others. Keep your faith and God will defend you. God does not like the traitors and also does not like those who are ungrateful. By this, we come to the end of tonight's uh, Quran study. From uh, next evening, inshallah, we will start a totally different subject. By tonight, we have finished uh, the, the subject of Hajj Quran uh, and the discussion about uh, pilgrimage right here. Tomorrow, the subject is very important, very cr crucial, and very, very critical, and also very sensitive. So we we'll discuss. Uh, inshallah, these uh, verses and study them tomorrow night. If there is any other question I'd like to answer, or if there is a comment, uh, yeah. this is the time to raise it. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, earlier, you mentioned about the veg vegetarians; uh, they don't have to do the sacrifice if, if they're not if they don't eat meat. You know, when when they do the Hajj or the on Eid or the sacrificing of animal or cattle or sheep when they do the hajj we have to that's part of the ritual right to do a sacrifice 
Yes, I said they have to do sec. Uh, they so. have to sacrifice, okay, even so. if they are vegetarian. Oh, they have to do it. Uh, they have to do it, because this is the command of God. Okay. You know, sometimes we we might like it, we might not. Uh, the, the commands of God, uh, though it's better for uh, though the Quran. See, the Quran repeats this fact. What you what God is commanding you is beneficial for you in this world and in the hereafter in both worlds it's beneficial for you so if we if we do not like something that god has commanded us to do it's still beneficial for us that we need to do so with sacrifice uh, with offering a sacrifice for pilgrimage they have to however and for other purposes which is food no, they don't have to. It's not, it's, it, uh, it is not mandatory on them. It is permissible. It's up to them. <clears throat> if they would like to eat meat of a cattle uh, uh, to save themselves as food, it is permissible. But if they believe they don't need meat, they do not like meat, they can pass that. Yes, they can skip that. Thank you so much, Mom. All right. Thank <laughs> you. All. Thank you. I'll uh, see you tomorrow, inshallah. May Allah bless and protect all of you. May Allah accept your prayers and your fastings. And may Allah give healings to all those who are ill and sick, those who are uh, especially sick and uh, impacted with this uh, COVID 19. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect everyone, especially those who are in the front line fighting against this pandemic. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.